If I say the word rip a cheap, what does that mean to you? Yes, rip a cheap. And by the way, it's not a Portuguese word. Does it ring any bell, 21? Well, let me help some of you guys. He is one of the most amazing characters of the Chronicles of Narnia, of C.S. Lewis. He is a mighty warrior. He is the best knight of Narnia. He is completely fearless. He values integrity, honor, courage, and respect. And he is indeed willing to lay down his life for all his friends. Now, he is not a giant. He is also not very physically strong. His appearance actually does not scare anyone. When the battle starts, when all the big strong guys are running and hiding for their lives, this guy is the first one to jump in the battle line, in the front line. Who is Ripper Cheap? Does anybody still have any idea who is? We have somebody in the, some people do in the back, right? So let me show you Ripper Cheap. That's him. Right? That's Ripper Cheap. Right? This fearless warrior is a little mouse. He's a mouse, and yet C.S. Lewis, in his book, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, is, says that, yes, he has the body of a mouse, but he has the heart of a lion. I'm going to say this again. C.S. Lewis, on The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, says that Ripper Cheap has the body of a little mouse, but he has the heart of a lion. Whereas other guys have the body of lions, but the heart of mice. Now... C.S. Lewis is making here at least three points. First of all, he makes that we cannot judge by outward appearances, right? Second, the size of your character is not proportional to the size of your body. That's the second thing. And the third thing is that in the Gospels, real strength is given in the heart to the heart and not to the muscles. So having said this, let me say another prayer now for us to open the word. Father, we'll open your word right now. Please lead and guide us. In all the truth. Amen. Now, it does not matter your religion. It does not matter where you come from, the language you speak. You cannot ignore it. You cannot deny that the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ changed the course of history. It was over a period of 2,000 years ago, but yet, a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, that the world was never going to be the same. Reality is that the world was never the same after Jesus Christ. Now, do you know any weekend period that changed the course of history? If you deny that, uh, you deny logic. Jesus Christ really make a huge difference. It was on that weekend of Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago, that heroes were thought to be cowards. And cowards were shown to be heroes. But let's go to the Bible. Let's open our Bibles in John chapter 19. You can open your Bibles. In our Pew Bibles here, the Black Bibles, you will find on page 1048 and 1049. John chapter 19. And again, if you want to open your Bibles, your tablets, your phones, whatever you have, just don't go to Snapchat right now. Right? John chapter 19, verses 38. And I'll be reading now from the New Kings James Version. Are you guys there with me? Are you there? All right, John 19, if you're there, say amen. amen. Okay, most of you guys are there. Okay, so John chapter 19, it says this. I'm reading now verse 38. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, it's a full mouth, this name, isn't it? Can you say Arimathea? Amen. Right, some people have a hard time with this, right? So let me just call him Joe, okay? After this, Joe, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took the body of Jesus. Now, stop right here. Did you notice something here? There is something here when I first read it, it actually bothered me a lot. Did you notice this? He said that Joe, being a disciple, but secretly for fear of the Jews. Now, I thought the real disciples were walking with Jesus all the time. I never realized that there was such a thing as an undercover disciple. Did you notice this here? I have heard of wolves dressing like sheep, but I have never heard of sheep dressing like wolves. But that's the, that's the thing here. The gospel, yes, says that Joseph was a true disciple in spite of his cowardice. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He's not worthy of this, Pastor. Let me see his credentials. Is he ordained? Does anybody know? No. He probably missed many of the miracles of Jesus. He was not there when Jesus fed the multitude. He was not there when the boat was sinking and everybody thought they were going to drown. 
Then where was this coward when Jesus walked on water? Who is this Joe anyways? I imagine the guy's asking. Well, now we know that Joe of Arimathea was a member of the Sanhedrin. Another full mouth, right? Sanhedrin. What is that? Well, the Sanhedrin, it was kind of a supreme judicial Judaic council composed of 71 members who were highly respected in Jerusalem. Now, the interesting thing is, is that this was kind of a supreme court for the Jews. I mean, the supreme court. Imagine this. That's what it was a little bit like for them. Now, this guy, the Bible says he was very rich. He was looking for the kingdom of God. That's what we, how much know about him. Now, pay attention to this. Joe's, Joe's fear here of the Jews kept him in the dark, but his desire to know the kingdom of God brought him into the light. This is a very important thing to understand. In the Gospel of Mark, you don't need to go there, just write it down. Matthew, Mark 15, 43 says this, that, that Joe had to muster up all the courage to ask Pilate for the body. Now, <coughs> did you get this? He had to muster up all courage to go to Pilate. For a long time, he was a coward. But the Bible says he was still what? What was he? Guys, is it a dead house here? What was he? Disciple. You know, he, was, he was a carpenter, he was a disciple. When the time came, however, he risked all his reputation, all his money, and all the respect people had for him to stand up for Jesus. That's what Joe. And he did not know, by the way, that Jesus was going to be resurrected. He didn't have the right theology. He didn't. Had no idea. Now, let's continue reading this. There's other things coming up here. Let's continue. Verse 39. Look what he says. John 19, 39. It says, and Nicodemus, another full mouth. Can you say Nicodemus? A little easier than Joseph of Arimathea. But let's call him Nick. Right? That, that is it easier, Nick? Right? So, and Nick, who at first came to Jesus by when? Night. Night also came, bring him a, a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 100 pounds. This was a lot. By the way, it's about 75 pounds in today's weight. Then they took the body of Jesus and bound it in strips stripes and linen and the spices as the custom of the Jews is to bury. Now, in the place where he was crucified, this is Jesus, there was a garden nearby and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So there they delayed Jesus because of the Jews' preparation day for the tomb was nearby. Now, what was the Jews' preparation day? Huh? Friday. That was Friday. Sabbath was coming. Now, here comes another guy. This is Nick. We first hear about Nick in John chapter 3. Now, it was to Nick that Jesus said the famous word, repeat with me, for God so loved the world that he did what? He gave his only begotten son for whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That was firstly said to Nick. Why did Nick come to Jesus at night? Was it because Jesus was too busy on his agenda? You know, I, I don't have time for you, you know, but I only have time at 9 p.m. Is that what it is? No. He came to him at night because he was afraid to be seen hanging out with Jesus with other people. He was a coward. Nick was a coward. He was a little chicken. Nick probably also was part of the Sanhedrin. He probably was also very rich. And I, we have a very good evidence to think that him and, and Joe were pretty close. Nick and Joe were pretty close on this. Now, but the point is this, just like Joe, he stayed in the dark doing the ministry of Jesus. He was not out there, but when Jesus needed him the most, he was out there for Jesus when Jesus needed him the most. But why? Why are these guys so concerned about this burial? Well, Craig Keener is not a known STA theologian, but by the way, he keeps the Sabbath openly. This guy is amazing what he's telling people out there. And he points out very interesting things. He says that burying the dead was a very pious duty of the Jews. You want to be pious, you have to bury the dead. Now, if the Romans got their way on, the, on that day, Jesus probably would not have even been buried. Besides, the scripture, if you go to the Old Testament, you see there was a commandment very clear, bury the dead before sundown. It was a very clear commandment to everyone. However, when the Romans got their way in Palestine in the first century, there were instances that people were left to rot away and their bodies were food for scavengers and later for the dogs. Now, we're talking about like really brutal scene. But Joe and Nick would not let this happen to Jesus. 
Nick was bringing around with him 100 pounds of spices and aloes, right? Now, just so you know, this was a lot again. This was equivalent for a burial of a king. They would mix up the spices with this type of linen and, and, strip, and stripes, and they would like roll it around the body. And this idea was to kind of reduce the odor of a decaying corpse. That's how he used to do this. But this method was very famous and very common around the Jews, but not to this amount. 75 pounds. Can you put 75 pounds on your back and walk around? They had to ask his servants to bring it. More people together on this. Nick and Joe on the same mission. Now, what does this action mean? Very simple. Joe and Nick were making sure that Jesus would have the burial of a king, not just a simple burial. Now, you have to put it into perspective. Don't forget that these are the guys who a few hours before were thought to be cowards, and now they're showing that they're not that cowards. Do you see a contrast here with me? Let me contrast here. I have said all this now to bring to this point. There is a contrast, a huge contrast. Remember Ripper Cheap, the little mouse from the beginning? You guys remember him? Right? He's still right there. Well, there we go. He just appeared there. That's good. Anyways, remember Ripper Cheap, the guy from the beginning, right? The little mouse with the heart of a lion. Yes, he looked like a mouse, but he was really a lion from within. You could only see his character demonstrated in the time of test. Friends, the cross of Jesus Christ was and still is the greatest test mankind has ever seen. The cross of Christ has the power to turn mice into lions and reveal the lions looking people are nothing but mice. We wonder where Joe and Nick were during the ministry of Jesus. I wonder, we wonder where were they when everything was good, when Jesus was making a success, becoming popular. But it also is fair to ask, now that Jesus was upon the cross, now that Jesus was dead, where were all the other guys who promised to lay down their lives for him? Where were they? Where was Peter's bravery? Where was his sword? Where were the sons of thunder? Where was Simon the Zealot, the revolutionary, the terrorist? Where were they at that time? With the exception of John the Baptist, I mean John the Apostle, who was probably about a teenager, 12, 14 years old, uh, and the women, and the whom? And the whom? And the women also, at the, at the cross, everyone else abandoned Jesus. Do you see any similarities for our days? Have you ever been abandoned by the people you trusted the most when you needed them the most? Jesus knows what it's like. Sometimes we think we are protected by lions. We are surrounded by mice. Mercy. Mercy. Maybe the disciples were just a little hopeless gang of cowards with no guts to stand up for anything. Maybe that's what they were. Any similarities for today? A group of people that come together they pretend they would die for the world, for everyone. But when the time gets really tough, they're nothing a bunch of mice. Any similarities for today? The cross of Jesus showed us that those who were in the light ran into the darkness. And those who were in the darkness, they ran into the light all around that time. Had it not been for Joe and Nick, the disciples would have left Jesus to rot on the cross until Sunday. Think about that. Let him rot. Think about that. What, but what matters most? What is the most important thing? The th cross is not a story of bravery versus cowardice. The story of the cross is about life versus death. It's about good versus evil. Yes, Joe and Nick were cowards for three and a half years. They preferred the glory and respect of man and the world than the glory of Jesus. The disciples that were with Jesus for three and a half years, they ran for their lives, revealing who they truly were. They abandoned Jesus when he needed him the most. The reality in this story, friends, this is that there are no lions in this story. They're all a bunch of mice. They're all a bunch of cowards, all of them. They have no guts, nothing in there. Now the cross, the shadow of the cross, turns cowards into heroes. It was the Holy Spirit who gave power to Joseph and Nicodemus to pick up what was left of a dead Messiah. But it was the same Holy Spirit who gave the disciples the faith to go and search for an empty tomb because Jesus had been resurrected. It was through the Holy Spirit that this little gang of cowards was turned into a community of faith. 
a self-insecure group found assurance in the name of the Lord. And that group, who had no gods to stand for anything but themselves, they had the courage to stand up even before death for Jesus Christ. Amen? amen. Can I have another amen to this? Yeah. This is powerful what Jesus did. This is one of the messages of the cross. Under the shadow of the cross, any mice can be made into a lion. So what does he mean to our lives today as we, as we close in here today? The very first thing is this. A lot of people think they need to muster up all their courage in the world to come and follow Jesus. This is wrong. You don't have to. You may have the body of a lion, but you always have the heart of a mouse until Jesus turns into a true lion. We're only made into lions because of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Don't make God waiting for you to get your life fixed. Get all things get together to come and follow him. Come to God and he will turn into a lion. The second thing, the disciples, including Joe and Nicodemus, okay, had already accepted the good news. They had. They had not been completely transformed. And church, you need to hear this. Jesus turned mice into lions. Amen? Amen. But not overnight. Let it sink in. Simeon Charles, one of the famous British clergymen, in the 1800s, he wrote this. Let me just read this little, little track here, what he says. It is generally supposed that by conversion, a man's character is altogether changed. But this is by no means true. Divine grace gives a new direction to a man's natural powers, but it does not strip him of them, so that he shall altogether cease to be the same as he was before. Now, what is saying this? When you come to Jesus, you don't receive a new character like magic. You receive new coordinates, new directions in life. And as you walk this walk with the Son of God, your character, your heart is changed. You may start the road as a mouse, but you will end it as a lion because of Jesus Christ. Now, conversion, some people think, that begins when you say yes. It ends in the baptistry, like you saw today, Jordan and Nesta being baptized. This is wrong. Conversion begins when you say yes and continues after the baptistry, after the baptism. The third thing for all of us, for everyone in here, tomorrow is Easter Sunday. You can either make this weekend all about the sweetness of chocolates, or you can make this weekend about the sweetness of a new life in Christ. You can make this weekend all about the Easter bunny, or you can make the weekend about the Easter lamb. You can use this weekend just as another excuse to continue pretending you are lying, when from within you are mice and you know it, you just don't want to admit it. Or you can, henceforth, beginning today, come to the Son of God and let Him give you new direction in life. Allow Him to give you a faith that will remove mountains, a boldness that is fearless before death, and goodness that overcomes all evil. Is that what you want for your life? Is that what you want for this Easter and for every day we celebrate His death and resurrection? Let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for your Son because under the shadow of his cross, we can see our cowardice. We thank you because you turn, you turn us, our, us, mice, into lions. We thank you for turning cowards into heroes. We pray that we may be true disciples of you, of your only Son. May we stand for him in the days of trouble that are coming so that we may cherish him forever. We pray in the name of the one who one day every tongue will confess and every knee will bow down. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you.